students' friends. Uh, let me say some words about identity, about cultural identity, about cultural identity. In architecture, mm -hmm. first of all, what is what is the meaning of cultural identity? Cultural identity is one of the most important aspects of social life. Cultural identity means a close affiliation with a particular social background distinct from other social groups. On the one hand, cultural identity is created by the identity of the individual, the identity of the affiliated social group, the identity of uh, national or ethnic belonging, but on the other hand, it is constituted by the identity of the place, the identity of the home, the identity of the settlement and the identity of the region. In our times, we have to state a dramatic loss of cultural identity in all countries, in all continents, all over the world. Certainly, the main reason for that loss of cultural identity is the massive pressure of globalization and internalization. If you compare the appearance here of cities on completely different continents today, it's nearly impossible to recognize any significant differences and cultural characteristics. Next. The Western style is considered as fashionable, uh, all the features of the own architectural traditions seem to be considered as expression of a kind of backwardness. And as a fatal result of this uh, misdevelopment, we can recognize an uniform, boring architectural environment which has lost all its characteristics, which has lost all its cultural identity. In uh, this lecture here, I will show you some of our projects being focused on different kinds of cultural identities and different parts in the world. Next. Um, the main intention of our projects is a basic research, demonstrating the possibilities and the chances of architectural solutions uh, in analyzing and discussing advantages and disadvantages, positive and negative aspects of various proposals. Uh, in this way, we want to set up a basis for future planning, and for future architectural projects, and uh, in, uh, we usually don't go to the step of detail planning, because we mean the process of detailed planning should be done by, by native architects. Although in some cases, of course, it may be advantageous to include a foreign architect um, if that foreign architect has a, a good capacity of understanding and uh, sensitivity, uh, sensitivity enough, uh, uh, maybe may arise a chance to introduce some technological innovations uh, to su support the evolution of uh, local building conditions. Usually in our projects, we go without strict instructions for the detailed architectural planning. Uh, in our intention, it is our intention to stimulate a variety of possible and possible of and sustainable, well, sustainable is very important, sustainable solutions. And uh, I think if we go, uh, if we give too much detail, formal and functional and constructional preset into the chief. Uh, sort of a mass production, a mass production of uniform architecture, mm -hmm. as you can find it all over the world, uh, destroying the qualities of man's environment. Uh, I think we will fight, we will fight the mass production of architecture results from copying uh, actual building examples. We want to bring forward uh, arch architectural qualities based on cultural identity. And uh, therefore, we favor architectural concepts based on an um, affiliation of an um, uh, identifiable building type and uh, also uh, based on individuality in particular aspects of design, of course. Quality in architecture 
has to be based on considering and uh, respecting cultural traditions because tradition, tradition is just as important as modification, as revolution. And uh, I have to emphasize, tradition is the nature of tradition. It's in no way static, it's in no way constant. In fact, uh, it is a dynamic factor. Tradition careers with uh, culture and society, and culture and society are in a continuous motion. And therefore also, of course, tradition is by no means conservative or stationary, but it is evolutionary, and tradition is developing. As I mentioned before, uh, we consider our work as a basic research, and basic research is a, uh, is a, a scientific subject uh, which is often neglected nowadays. Basic research, however, uh, is the most important, uh, most important precondition for sustaining the architecture. Basic research nowadays is the most important precondition for keeping cultural identity. During the last years, we have uh, carried out several projects in various regions and uh, various cultures uh, in Central Asia, in Southeast Asia, in Latin America, in Oceania. And in all these regions, we were confronted with a proceeding extermination of cultural identity. It is a dreadful process, uh, mainly caused, caused by the overpowering impact of the globalization of the Western style of culture comprising economy, society, and technology. The loss of uh, indigenous culture means a uh, loss of ethnic identity. It means merging in the crowd of a uniform and anonymous mass. Uh, the loss of indigenous architecture means the loss of this own, own history and their own tradition. Mostly inadequate the use of building materials and building techniques. Mostly a lack of adaptation um, to local environmental conditions, especially uh, climatic conditions, and a missing context with the local social behavior. Most importantly. And uh, consequently, a building which doesn't correspond with the cultural and social background of office residents, makes them, the residents, living slaves of our environments. Next. Um, our project uh, was called, uh, what we made in um, 2001, was it? It was Solar Town, Lada. And uh, project with students in northern India, in the Himalayas. Himalayas. And the aims of the projects um, comprised general building concepts as well as technology transfer and proposals for implementations. And uh, the relevant reason underlying this project was the governmental planning of a settlement for about 5,000 inhabitants near uh, the capital day, the capital day of Ladakh. And uh, the site is situated in the western Himalayas in about 3,500 meters sea level. And uh, we decided here to carry out the basic research by an interdisciplinary cooperation of students and teachers of architecture and topology and uh, building physics. Uh, and uh, the main priorities of our proposal, proposed architectural concepts were adapting the buildings to the harsh climate in the Himalayas and keeping and supporting cultural identity. In Lada, climate uh, adapted designs uh, has a main priority because of the extreme temperature difference, differences between day and night, between summer and winter. And especially the tremendous cold winter time causes great problems. Uh, since Ladakh has uh, not enough any energy and not enough fuel reserves, uh, normal heating is not re uh, reasonable and uh, air conditioning is not possible because of the uh, very low electric generation. And therefore, it's uh, absolutely necessary to provide the uh, use of the natural solar radiation during the architectural conception. 
And there are several preconditions for providing a solar radiation-based proofing concept. Uh, it is a correct orientation, it's very important. So this precondition has a deciding effect on the master plan, for example, of the master plan layer. And uh, it is an increased heat insulation, of course, and heat storage for temperature balance. And this is achieved uh, by use of proper building materials, of course, and uh, proper elements and uh, building constructions. And last but not least, at least at the classroom, a compact uh, structured space, and this is achieved by surrounding the living room by side rooms. This is a special thing in the identity of the, uh, of the behavior, social behavior of the Ladakh people. And all of these principles are not to be newly invented, they must not be newly invented. They can be found within the traditional architecture of Ladakh itself. Uh, for example, the traditional orientation. Traditional Ladakh houses or here monasteries also are oriented to the south. The main windows are directed to the south, and the winter sun uh, rising at the low angle, and it, um, its rays reach far into the house interior and warm it up. And in summertime, the sun rises at a very high angle during noon and then during shade. Uh, traditional window roofings you can see and the pictures increase this effect. Next. Uh, the next aspect, the compact structured space. The center of the traditional Ladakh house is occupied by the winter kitchen, so-called winter kitchen, because it's only used in winter uh, in, the, uh, in the cold season. And the winter kitchen is usually the largest room in the house. During the winter time, the whole family lives and sleeps in the winter kitchen because it's the only room uh, which is heated. And uh, the winter kitchen usually is exposed up to the outside, just on the south side, only on the south side. And then to the north and to the west and to the east, it is enclosed by side rooms, the side rooms which are not used during the winter time. And uh, this is the compactness of the building layout which also can be observed in the rectangular plan of the houses here, uh, which provides a minimal surface for keeping the interior damage. Next. Considering uh, all of these aspects in the totality, they testify a perfect adaptation of the architectural concept of the local climate and the local environment condition. And uh, in this way, Traditional architecture must not be neglected in its principles. And we have to learn from building traditions. And we must keep the knowledge accumulated over many generations of uh, men's experience. And we have to develop also the knowledge to adapt building techniques and architectural layout to our current status of technology and society. It changes, of course, over time. Our program in Ladakh comprised the uh, documentation and analysis of traditional Ladakh building types and methods and the development by uh, the means of modern technologies. And here, uh, you know, essential feature of our proposals was to provide a continuous evolution of the local building uh, culture to avoid a break of culture and society. Because deeply rooted traditions, like here in Lata. Developing our many, many generations can only be transformed gradually. Sudden alterations of, of building methods and building methods would destroy our cultural identities in architecture completely. We've continued our uh, art project by selling for the activities and so we had a design program with students and our University of Technology in Vienna. And uh, the topics were here developing prototypes of residential buildings and public buildings and developing a concept for a building and energy center to inform the local people about concepts and uh, applications of sustainable buildings and uh, sustainable technology. And uh, afterwards, we arranged some uh, several ex exhibitions at a rather large scope and 
to produce the publication and send all the results to the uh, local people in Ladakh. Next. Yeah, uh, our pro, uh, joint project Culture of Living in 2005, it was in, with a comparison with the European Union Culture Program. And the subject should be, should be uh, documentation and uh, analysis of uh, traditions of living in very different cultures on um, uh, two continents in Europe, in Southern Europe and in Southeast Asia. And uh, these cultural identities should be shown in their variety, the differences, and the similarities. And it should be shown the importance how we design our houses for living on the social cultural development in present and future. And next, just a few weeks before we arrived, before our workshop started, the big tsunami disaster of December 2015 occurred, and so we changed and enlarged the project by a workshop focusing on post disaster reconstruction concept after the enormous destruction, you know, of mainly in Machi on the island of Sumatra. And uh, together with the immediate experts from the university and the students from the university, they have a local university in Jakarta, we assembled and analyzed all available, all available informations about the way of living in Aceh, focusing the layout of typical Aceh's houses and so on. Next. And uh, back in when we started a design program to develop solutions for the reconstruction in Aceh, uh, comprising master plans and phosphor uh, settlements, as well as the building and uh, building techniques and new building types, but based on uh, the, uh, the way of living in Aceh, of course. Uh, in this design program, a uh, particular attention was turned on the precondition to involve the local people, the work of both the local people directly in the process of constructing, respectively rebuilding the houses. And uh, recent incidences have shown and uh, have really uh, made proposed to light the importance of this concept because during the reconstruction work after another disaster. Uh, I mean the big earthquake in Georgia in uh, 2006. The local village uh, people there were deeply incorporated um, into the organization as well as uh, into the construction work. And uh, the results of this concept involving the local people can be considered as one of the best reconstruction campaigns worldwide until now. Next. Another project was uh, the, uh, we called it the current situation of the GER area in Ulaanbaatar city. Uh, it was uh, 2007, and then this project um, it concerned one of the most serious problems in Central Asia, uh, namely the transition from nomadic to sedentary lifestyle. This is the second half of the 20th century. Many Mongolian people has moved from the countryside into the town, into the urban space. And this process causes fatal problems in social behavior and in environmental pollution. And uh, it causes nearly unresolved difficulties in the supply of water, in the supply of food, fuel for heating, and all of the other kinds of uh, infrastructure. Uh, you must know Mongolia, the, the deepest uh, temperatures in Mongolia around Ulaanbaatar are uh, minus 40 degrees, minus, sometimes minus 50 degrees. And uh, the, the, the highest temperatures in Ulaanbaatar, uh, about the in July, was plus 30 degrees. You can imagine a span of, uh, of, of 70 degrees or 80, 80 degrees. It's incredible. Mm. The worst situation of all these problems uh, is found in the slums of the so-called Gem district, which uh, surrounds the Mongolian capital in Bata. And uh, there we started our research, our basic research. Next. The main problem 
the main problem within the process of transition from romanticism to sedentariness is based on the fact that the Mongolians never had developed any building types, any building types or any building methods for stationary architecture. Now, the one and only Mongolian building type is the, the yurt or gea in Mongolian language, and the yurt, the gea, is a tent. And the uh, yurt type, the gea type, has been developed and optimized to the utmost perfection over a country of a countless uh, generations. The gea is a national symbol of Mongolia. The Gare is venerated by Mongolians like a center. The Gare is the uh, most important symbol of Mongolian culture and identity. And the Gare is the standard building type in Ulaanbaatar's Gare districts. The Gare districts around Ulaanbaatar consist of nearly 100,000 Gares. 100,000 tents in the suburb area of a town of one million, well, can you imagine? But nevertheless, the area uh, is designed for nomadic people, of course. Yeah? This building type is completely unsuitable for settlements. It must be replaced. Uh, it must be replaced by proper stationary building types in the near future. And however, as a result of this replacement in future, an essential part of Mongolian tradition and cultural identity will be lost and will be lost for you. Next. Our project, uh, the current situation on the area in Ulaanbaatar city, uh, was documenting and analyzing the manifold problems in the surroundings of the Mongolian capital and is working out proposals for improvement of the current situation. And uh, for this reason, we uh, started a joint program with the Mongolian University of uh, Science and Technology in Ulaanbaatar. We arranged an uh, international symposium in Mongolia, we arranged an international symposium in Vienna, and uh, we made field researches in, with Austrian students and Mongolian experts and students uh, in the Gare districts, as well as in the Mongolian countryside, uh, to experience the contemporary Mongolian nomadic lifestyle, as well as the Mongolian sedentary way of life. It's really problematic. And uh, after our field research in Mongolia, we continued the project by a design program at the uh, University of Technology, focused on two points developing sustainable building types for sedentary life and developing sustainable uh, building technologies designed for the extreme climatic conditions of Mongolia. Of course, the social background was always the main focus. Next. Um, city culture in motion, uh, we have many other projects, but this is the last I uh, tell you here. The project City Culture in Motion was a daily project with the European Union culture program and uh, it was held in Bangkok in Thailand, in Thailand in the well-known university Chulamukong. And the topic of this project was a dialogue about the various aspects of urban culture. The reasons of, uh, and the results of cultural change in past and present. Particular uh, characteristic, characteristics of urban structures in Asia and Europe was on one of the aspects and the alarming trees of cultural identity in uh, cities worldwide is globalizing from uniformity and monotony in the structures as well in the, as in the outward appearance. Next. In Bangkok, we have a joint workshop with Austrian and Thai students and teachers and the subject of the workshop was a uh, governmental plan for innovation of a historic urban area in the center of Bangkok. And this area is really exceptional in Bangkok. If you know Bangkok, you maybe will remember it as a big city with gigantic highways leading right through residential areas with horrible traffic jams, with unbearable peak exhaust emissions and with an incredible voice. A little bit like Mumbai. 
Uh, but the small historic flow of Bangkok is exactly opposite. He said, it did space with narrow lanes and tiny places, it's quiet, they can hear the birds singing. It's a little bit similar to that uh, fisherman uh, settlement we saw uh, tomorrow, uh, today. And uh, this area in Bangkok is completely missing the hectic behavior of the big city. The government wants, wanted and wants, I think, wants to adapt this historic core to the modern standards of the mega city Bangkok. It wants, uh, the government wants to be, uh, the, wants to upgrade this idyllic area. But uh, we considered this alteration as a completely wrong decision. Instead of uh, transforming the old center to a modern town based on a purely functionally orientated, standardized, and anonymous structure, the qualities of living here rather should be transformed to the modern city. And uh, so our workshop in Mantra was focused on documenting and analyzing the urban qualities of the historic center. Next. And uh, during this workshop, I came to realize the great advantage of a joint research of members with a different cultural background. And uh, I want to give you an example. One of the tasks of our workshop was to find out the most important spot on the research area. Our Austrian students located the spot either on a small place where people meet for chatting or the small bridge over the canal with a tiny kiosk where you can sit in the open air for a cup of tea and also chatting. But one of the Thai students had a completely different opinion about the most important spot on the research area. In his view, he located the most important spot in a corner of an in inconspicuous room in a completely inconspicuous house. And the reason for this view of importance of space was very, very characteristic for local people. Next. Because in that mansion, inconspicuous for us, inconspicuous corner, there hung a big picture of the king of Thailand, his majesty, Rama the Knight. And should we consider such an attitude to the importance of urban space as peculiar, as eccentric? Or should we consider it rather as a typical and very necessary feature for understanding the whole scope of cultural identity, of a place, of a town, of a country? Next. If you try to understand the cultural identity of a place, of a town, and of a country, we must take into consideration countless various aspects. And some of these aspects are really not conspicuous. Some of the aspects may not be noticed by foreigners because sometimes the foreigners are not informed sufficiently. And uh, some of the aspects, aspects Make that be noticed by local people sometimes. Because local people who live with the many habits and traditions within the lifestyle, uh, without stopping them, without taking them in consideration. Because these things seem to be so completely common and normal and natural that they couldn't be taken into uh, consideration for them. In uh, meaning of local. And maybe in this case, it's an outside uh, foreigner who's recognized some quite important aspects of cultural identity which are failed to be noticed by local people themselves. And uh, I think there's a reason why we should make basic research in a teamwork of local experts and foreign experts. And it's the best way to get a holistic perception of cultural identity. This is sort of basis for future decisions in planning.